Going from uh, figuring out what gold is doing next, we'll go to rare earth elements. We've been hearing a lot from the U.S. government, Canadian government, all over the world what's, what's happening in this sector. It's very strategic. It's very important for people to understand that the sector is not dead. If anything, it's more alive than it ever been. But we learned a lot of lessons over the last 10 years, what to do and what not to do in that sector. So what you will see here that being a mining company 10 years ago, we are focusing today on refining and recycling. And why it's very important is because going and building a mine, and we are not that far from the only U.S. mine that was built, and it cost $1.7 billion and then we went bankrupt. How do we avoid that risk of putting hundreds of millions of dollars into the ground and then being fully dependent on the Chinese government not influencing the pricing. So, I'll, uh, since we only have 10 minutes, uh, and now it's down to nine, I'll quickly go through some of the slides, forward-looking statement as usual. So what you see on the left, we produce neodymium oxide. That's the main oxide of rare earth elements that go into building magnets. That neodymium metal then goes into magnet, magnet goes into motors. And that's the main driver of this entire sector. So if we go about what Geomega today is, we have a rare earth processing technology which is developed by our private subsidiary in Nord, and as well we have Montviel, which is a 43101 large resource permanent, uh, um, a large resource of a carbonatite, basnesite, and it is the largest in Canada. Uh, but why are we here really? It's because of the ISR technology that we developed over the last five years. This technology, most importantly, we need to understand it's clean, and it is sustainable because it gives us an opportunity to produce rare earth elements without having to ship all our material to China, where we have no control on how they are processing it in, and what uh, kind of pollution it creates. So the most important thing that I want you to see there is the 95% recovery of main reagents. We, that's how much we recover, and that's why we can be economic, competitive with China. Uh, CapEx is low, and we'll discuss that in a second. Uh, but really, the rare earth pricing. I just wanted to show here a little bit the pricing that we see in the market today. And the, what is the opportunity? The opportunity is going after this high-grade material, which is in the magnet, which is the product that we've been making for years with, the, with rare earth elements. And that high-grade material, you need just very small volumes of it to generate high revenues and high margins as well. So the objective is sell it all into the European market after this. We'd love to sell it into the U.S., but U.S. abandoned any kind of production of uh, magnets over the, uh, in the 90s, and now uh, they're slowly trying to uh, attract it back. So here's a quick summary of the, our model. What, what are we going to be pro processing is 1.5 tons per day of magnet waste. What is magnet waste? It gets produced from uh, of uh, grinding down the magnets down to a final shape, and, and as well, the end-of-life material. It's all running at 30% rare earth elements. So it doesn't matter if I'm getting a magnet from China, from US, from Canada, or from wherever, it's always going to be running at approximately 30. So it always has those four elements, ND, PR, DYTB. I don't have to deal with any of the chip elements, the lanthanums, the ceriums. So a low capex, $2.6 million to process 1.5 tons per day over eight hours. That's our starting point. That, with an operating cost of $3 per kilogram of the total rares, can generate $10 million on a $2.6 million investment. Profit margin of 20%. If I drive it up to the full 24-hour uh, 24 operation, that gives me 4.5 tons uh, per day. And with that, do the math, you can generate $30 million of sales with six to $8 million of profits on a $2.6 million investment. That's starting to sound very interesting. Now, let's uh, see where we are. So we've uh, completed this year the pilot planting, uh, the pilot plant uh, work, the optimization, equity financing with the strategic investor. Uh, the feed study, the engineering study has been uh, published just a month ago. Uh, and now where we stand is we are uh, working on selecting the location in Quebec. Then the financing, the debt and the government financing that is about to be announced very shortly as well. And then we, uh, by the end of this uh, fourth quarter, we start the engineering, procurement, and construction phase with offtakes to, to be announced probably at the beginning of next year. Plant commissioning in 2020. So if you want to invest in rarers and you are looking to invest in a company that will have cash flow, this is probably the only company that you can look at investing on the public markets. 
feed material, I just told you, there are two main uh, waste producers. Primary magnet, when you make a magnet, you make it into a block, then you have to cut it. You cut it into sections, into the final uh, form of that magnet. But you have a lot as, uh, as well of end-of-life material. Where is this end-of-life coming from? It's coming from turbines, it's coming from electric motors, coming from many different applications, including your cell phone. Uh, and that is the uh, circular economy of the rare earth uh, industry. It exists today in China, but it doesn't exist outside of China, and it, nobody's talking about it. Well, people are starting to talk about it because we started talking about it five years ago, and today we are slowly starting to, to see the U.S. government, the Canadian government, the European Union are all waking up to the reality that you do need to go after the circular economy behind rare earth elements. Because every stage where you, uh, from the day that you produced oxide, you send, uh, you send it to the metal manufacturer. The metal manufacturer produces waste. That waste goes back to us. The, magnet, uh, the metal then goes to the magnet manufacturer to go and make those special shapes for the different motors. That produces more waste, and that waste goes back to us. But then the final product goes into the, uh, the, the manufacturer. So whether it's cell phones, wind turbines, electric motors, and then there is disposal. And during, uh, at the end of the disposal uh, stage, there is still a collection. That collection point is mo missing today because nobody is there to buy the magnet, to buy the magnet waste. We are the first ones to do it. And that's why we are going uh, to set up this full closed cycle within North America and uh, pretty much outside of China. Um, we already have agreements, so I won't get into the details of that, with the European companies, US companies that are getting uh, end-of-life material collected today. We are part of a study with a large uh, EV manufacturer uh, to collect magnets from their, uh, from their motors. We have already the sales agreement set up uh, with a, with a Singapore-based group that all the oxides that we'll be producing will either be going to Europe or going to, through them to, uh, to sell uh, I in Asia. Uh, more than that, I want you to understand where is that feed. That feed today, you have 160,000 tons of magnet that were produced in 2018. On average, to make a magnet, you have to produce waste. That's 15 to 30% waste. 24 to 48,000 tons. The electric vehicle, on average, is 3 kilograms of magnet. That's times, six, uh, times 2 million uh, electric vehicles last year. That's 6,000 tons. That's a lot of material to start getting collected every year. Wind power, which is the biggest driver today of the magnet uh, consumption, for three megawatts, you get two tons of magnet in there. You, you see the numbers there, how much uh, turbines are consuming magnets in terms of growth per year. And more importantly is the disassembly, because what it goes today into production, what gets installed, has to be disassembled in the future. So. What does it mean for this industry? I'm starting with a small plant of 1.5 tons per day. That's $10 million in sales. 4.5 tons per day goes probably within the first year after that, $30 million in sales. You put the second plant straight in a location like Japan where they make a, a, the second largest manufacturer after China, that's $60 million in sales. In, on what? On uh, not even $6 million of investments. But really... I'm still a fraction of the potential market. The actual potential market is the primary waste, what you see there, the, uh, the primary waste uh, upper limit, and the end of life. So that's $1.1 billion industry that is pretty much fully dominated again by whom? By China, because it's all within China. And what is it, uh, what are we expecting in 2030? Even more. So that is the time to be looking at rarer production, but through refining. Now, what, uh, what goes more than uh, what's the next future for, for us? This technology starts with magnets, but there are other feeds which are using rare earth elements today, which are not being recycled because nobody has the technology. So we are looking to apply to other rare earth uh, feeds, on top of that to other mater strategic critical materials which are being, not being recycled today or not being properly refined. And on top of this, we are looking to then set up the facility to process concentrates from other mining companies who want to put the mine into production. And that way, they have an option not to only send it to China, but they can send it to us as well. Um, rare sector, a quick summary. Those are the four elements that go into the magnets. Uh, the bottleneck is the refining capacity in China. Uh, the usages are roughly 
uh, well spread between production and demand. But the most important thing is the permanent magnet sector, which is 25 to 30 percent of the usage, represents 80 percent of the value of the entire rare sector. And that's why we need to focus on that sector, the magnets. The driver uh, of the industry is the magnet, and you can see the demand growth from automotive. Uh, but at the same time, we see all the other sectors continuing to grow in terms of demand for magnets. Why, do, why are we here because of China? Because we don't want to see that spike again. And actually, that spike is really bad for demand. So we are trying to be in production today with a very innovative solution in terms of processing uh, rares. Um, New Dean pricing, everything is very flat and stable right now, which is much better. And we see demand, uh, we see demand uh, be returning to the market because the prices are much more stable. Uh, management, won't get into the, that slide right now. Uh, and share structure, so you see the, the performance of the company after five years of doing R&D, hitting all the milestones, and we are clearly succeeding and now going towards the final stages of the financing with the Quebec government, with the Canadian government, and going to production for first cash flow coming out next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.